I'll call this foolish meeting of the North Reading School Committee to order <laughs> for Monday, December 18th. You might notice, or maybe you won't notice anything different about us tonight, but we are in a heated battle with the Selectmen. Uh, Selectmen Chairman Mike Prisco challenged me and our board to an ugly sweater contest, and um, our representative, the reporter from the transcript, will take our picture tonight, and the transcript is going to run this contest on their Facebook page and also on the North Reading Community Connection page to see who has the ugliest sweaters. If, if it was the best looking people in the ugliest sweaters, we would win, but it's just the ugliest sweaters. It's so the only thing that the selectmen thought they might have a chance of beating us at. Right, exactly. I just got to say that Mr. Venezia has <laughs> exceeded all expectations <laughs> at every level. <laughs> and uh, I'm just so pleased to see what he looks like tonight. How does it back with this? <laughs> 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 and we actually have uh, we have some real business to deal with tonight. We just uh, had an executive session to discuss uh, collective bargaining. We had just entered uh, collective bargaining with the North Reading Teachers Association, and we had our first meeting with them, and we had a strategy session tonight prior to this meeting. Uh, first order of business is public input. If there's anybody here not on the agenda who wishes to be heard, seeing no one. Next, we'll go to our student report, and we have Samantha Galvin from the class of 2020, which would make you a sophomore. Pretty good math, I'm good with math. <laughs> Samantha. Hello, um, activities have been dwindling down as we get closer to holiday break, but in terms of athletics, winter sports teams are just beginning to have their first games and meets, and they have started off all very successful. Um, the track and field team won both boys and girls won their first meet against Newburyport and unfortunately lost their second meet in a very close race against Pentucket. The boys hockey team also won its first game in 3-2 to two against Pentucket on this past Saturday. Both the boys and the girls basketball teams had their first victories and the girls basketball team won against Latin Academy and coach Joe Casey led the boys basketball team in his 200 victory over Boston United. As the sports teams have had their first games, the musical Beauty and the Beast has just finished showing, and the final shows were a huge success. The All four shows were pretty much entirely sold out, and the judges who attended the third showing were extremely impressed. Um, the Masters team disassembled the set on Tuesday and were extremely grateful to all those who were able to attend. And even though Beauty and the Beast is over, the high school is having their winter concert, the 20th. So the band and chorus will be performing holiday songs that they've been working on. Um, academics recently have been, there's been a lot of news for juniors and sophomores. PSAT scores came out on December 13th and students have been able to access their scores online via the college board accounts that we have set up. And also a lot of seniors have been finding out news from colleges from early action and early decision. Um, with winter and holidays, there's been a lot of charity action taking place for the clubs at North Reading High School. And tonight, Dancing with the Hornets is hosting an event called Dancing with the Hornets, which is ran by the dance team, where members of the sports teams compete with members of the dance team in a dance competition. Um, also, this past Friday, student council leadership training took place, and we had one of our former alumni, Julie Bash, attend, and she talked about her experience as a NEMAS president. She was the first NEMAS president <coughs> ever from North Reading, and she really made student council what it is today. Um, and student council is running their ugly sweater contest, just like you guys, this <laughs> Friday, for all the students at the school. and. Red Cross Club is collecting toiletries for the Totes for Hopes fundraiser. And basically what that fundraiser does is they collect toiletries and then they fill backpacks and tote bags for, with all the supplies for homeless veterans. And in preparation for HMUN, which is Harvard Model United Nations, a competition that selected students from the Model United Nations Club attend. Um, we are hosting a debate with North Andover here in the DLL on January 4th. Um, as far as a sample of student work, I decided to bring in a project that I did in Miss Francis's chemistry class and I thought it was really cool because 
we picked two careers that require you to have a great deal of knowledge in chemistry. And I thought that was really interesting because it has direct application to our lives because we get to look into like potential careers that we might want to do when we get older. And it was just cool to see how the stuff that we are actually doing in class could potentially benefit us in the future. You know, if you're still at the old high school, you probably only have like three careers to choose from. But here, there's probably like <coughs> 300. So it's a good move. We made, built this school. Any questions for Samantha? Excellent job. Great job. This is your first time, right? This has been Very a stellar. It is a good group. Yeah, stellar group. Yeah, Every yeah. one on their first time has been outstanding. I just want to say, Allison's here. The play was <laughs> unbelievable. Um, I've seen all of the plays for the last five years, and I think this might have been even better than the others, which were all great. And um, I was there the second Friday, and there wasn't an empty seat. I think only 30 seats of all four shows didn't get sold, and that was the first night. Yeah. So congratulations to you and the kids. And her. There was, it was fantastic. Just, just to add to that, um, a friend in town who is involved in music and has seen several student productions in many high schools and said she's never seen anything like this. She said it was by far the best student production she's ever seen. And she knows what she's talking about. I don't, but she does. So I took her word for it. It was great. It was great. I don't know anything. I just know I liked it. <laughs> it was really good. And, I, and you know, I, I don't know if, if like the sound, the, everything worked better. We could hear better. The, <coughs> I don't know if the kids were trained better to speak into the microphones, but everything was, um, it was just top quality. Yeah, it was perfection. Excellent. So any questions for Samantha? No? I will say that if anybody wants a sweater, it can be had for the right price. So <laughs> give me a call after the meeting, anytime. You can have it. We have a rule here, Samantha. Unless you're being punished, you don't have to stay for the rest of the meeting. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and will Mr. Bernard get, make sure she gets her work back? I can do that for you. I'll bring it back, to you, Samantha. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay, just quickly before we get to the um, high school presentation, the MSBA SSBC update, there's really not much formal to report, correct, Mr. Bernard? Correct. Correct. Just we have one more one more scheduled meeting. We hope until the project is closed out. Right. January the 9th. Right. Um, there are a few issues that are being worked on, but nothing. Nothing to report tonight. Right. Okay. Next, this is our favorite time of um, we start our of year because we start our five um, tours. We don't have to go too far for the tour of the high school, but. Uh, the high school and middle school will present here. But tonight we have Mr. LaPrette, principal of the high school, and he is going to lead us into the high school presentation. AJ? Thank you very much, Mr. Webster. Um, we've got uh, four brief yet deeply interesting <coughs> presentations this evening. Um, we are working off the uh, tech infusion theme. Uh, which I see some have applied to their ugly sweaters, which is nice to see. Um, oh, you want to bring a mic? Yeah. Okay. We're not so, leaving, we're just going to yeah, stay. <laughs> so uh, tonight's program is uh, Ms. Dasho and members of the Robotics uh, Academy showcasing one of their projects, Ms. Kane, video production, uh, and that is uh, NR Rocks. Ms. Amy Luckowitz giving us uh, uh, kind of a recap of the reality fair that was in its second year uh, this year and I'll be speaking at the end talking about the new uh, plus portals module that we're now using at the high school offering greater uh, connectivity between teachers students and parents I'm going to start with Ms. Dasha and her, uh, her team uh, with respect to the robotics uh, showcase Thank you, Mr. and good evening I'm just going to get out of your way. Oh, so this is a freeze, so you can unfreeze it when, because we still got that up there. Oh, do you want to unfreeze it now? Well, I'd, I'd rather get your, <laughs> Okay. When is your, where's your... Uh, Chrome. <coughs> oh. Where your, it's right here, correct? Yeah, right there. Okay. Um, wait, what oh, was that, a little demo? All right. There you are. There it is. All right, there you okay. are. Oh, I hit I hit freeze again. So oh, there it is, perfect. I don't know how to use this thing. I'm just gonna use this thing. I don't, I don't even know how to use it. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Well, 
Again, good evening, everybody. My name is Kathy Dasho, and I'm the District Digital Learning Specialist um, for K-12 for the North Reading Public Schools. And I'm happy to have a couple of my students here, Tariq Ordeal and uh, Victoria Grasso, to demonstrate uh, just a small portion of one of the challenges we do in Robotics Academy. Um, I'm happy to report that we do have robots um, in the high school now. For the past six years, uh, seven years, we've mostly had our robots in the middle school, as you probably know and remember. Um, we are, for the past three years, we do have some robots in the elementaries. We are beginning to make inroads there in the elementaries. And this is our first year uh, with uh, a nice pathway for the students for robots in the high school. Uh, benefits across the curriculum. This is just a shot of some of the students uh, back in September, October building the robots. They come in kits like most robots do and it really gives them a great, a great opportunity for collaboration, teamwork, um, working together. It's, it's just a great thing for them and they really do enjoy the building process. The nice thing about the challenges and again this piece that we're going to show you tonight is it really can tie into the real world. This challenge we're showing you is actually called the minefield challenge, and it's something that even the Army could use to defuse mines. Um, in this case, what you're going to see, the first part is going to be 30 seconds of what we call autonomous uh, behavior by the robot, and this is uh, a behavior that is pre-programmed and downloaded to the robot. The second part that you'll see is Tariq will be holding the controller, the microcontroller, and that's controlled by him. So two parts. One, completely program, and the robot works independently, just running from the program. And the second part is where Tar Tariq will control the robot. Um, I, I did pass out uh, some of the competencies on the tables for you to take with you. This is a sample of some of the rubrics we use in the class um, to make sure that the robot and the kids are really working hard. And this is a sample of the competencies that I passed out on the table. Um, this is what it actually looks like in the classroom. Again, we're just showing a small portion of it tonight, but the mind fail challenge is quite extensive and they get points and everything is timed also. So the autonomous part is 30 seconds and the uh, microcontrolled part is 90 seconds, I do believe. So we're going to have Victoria and Tariq go ahead and demonstrate. Are we ready? <laughs> you're gonna, are you going to speak? No, because if you're going to speak, I was going to say, one of you hold the microphone so they can pick it up on your cam. So. What I'm also going to put up on the screen is just the actual, it looks kind of texty because we brought it into Google Docs. But this is actually what Robot C looks like. They actually program in Robot C, which is a derivative of the C programming language. And this is exactly what it looks like. So this is Victoria's actual program. And Tariq, He's in, they're in the same group. <laughs> so when I press the, the D button on the joystick, it's gonna start the autonomous 30 second part. And it's gonna start like this. It's gonna go drop off the mine picks up the arm and then drives it back and we're supposed to put another one on and just keep on doing that for three of them. It's a little bit different because of the rug because in the... There's a little slippage with the wheels on the rug. <laughs> yeah, so it's it might hit the box or not. And then after the 30 second part, when uh, I, I'm able to press the U button on the joystick, that should be allowed, uh, like after 30 seconds, it'll allow me to freehand the entire control. But this is me right now, and because of the <laughs> rug, I can barely turn, mm -hmm. but if I just keep going. So there's no programming here, it's just you using the remote control at this yeah. time. Well, there's a little bit of programming. He had to program the microcontroller. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And you have, to, you have to join them. The brain of the robot, which is called the cortex, has to be joined to the microcontroller. Oh, okay. okay. So, yeah. So basically this is, you get points. And the way we do it in class That's pretty good. is it's two teams against each other in the timed. Mm -hmm. 
So in reality, we're just demonstrating this. But in class, he's they're going against another team. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you. He didn't allow to have a lot of room to maneuver that there. That's better than I can parallel park a car. Some people actually take that. We call this well, it's not really the claw, but they take the arm and they actually have it go backwards, and you can just drop it. For the bowl in the middle, you do get the most points. The the copier cover on the side is less points than the bowl in the middle. And again, this is a timed challenge. It's yep. very much like first. First yeah. does autonomous and then controlled. So this is very much like that. Did they build they built this? They robot built every in the single class? one of these robots. So how many do you have now that are built? Now we have five. Five. five and they started out by building the claw bot, because mm -hmm. we started out with a can challenge. But as time goes on and the students get more comfortable with dealing with the parts and everything, they adjust the design. We have some that actually hover across sides. So now, will, will they be, will they be competing in, against other high schools at any time, or is that something that you have to have? They a club? do have vex challenges, and that is something we're looking at. Okay. There is, there is, yeah, yeah. And at the technology conference this past fall at MassQ, mm -hmm. I did meet some teachers from the Stoneham Public School System, and they said we should actually have a town to town, more friendly like fun. challenge. Yeah. that's not so pressure filled and. And money filled. <laughs> well, we'll tell them it's not pressure filled till they get here. <laughs> <laughs> then it'll be cutthroat. But so that's the challenge. Now, that's one of the challenges. We have many, but that's the minefield. Is this the new class, Mr. Lepret, that we started this year? Uh, that was. Uh, I was going to mention that in, in an opportunity. Uh, thank you for bringing it up. This, so you might recall, um, last year uh, around this time, I asked to uh, have the new course, the Ro Robotics Academy, approved and. Um, this is the uh, this is the current state of the robotics academy. Uh, so thank you for that, and I think you can see we made some some great strides uh, in our first year of this course. What was the, so? Did we have enough? Were there more students that wanted to take it than we had space, or did we? No, we filled the re, we filled all the requests. We did. It what, started did. out with small. It started out with about 12, 13 students, but then as the as two weeks went by in September. More students, and now we're up to about 21, 22. See, that's what I'm wondering. Next year, you may get much more demand because oh, yeah, the students I would, I would. that were in this class are going to say it was cool and this and that, and right. it's going to prepare us for, you know, a career down well, the road. And, <laughs> yeah, and, and I, I'll, I'll be seeing you in a couple of weeks with yeah, a request on, uh, <laughs> that's the, the rope, you know, the next, the next step. Excellent. <laughs> well, that was great. Not to give Thank it away. You. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Gloria, three. Thank you. That was great. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you guys. Thank you. Very nice. I'm a bear. Nice job. Skip basketball All right. I think you've gone too far. <laughs> okay. You like that? Uh, Ms. Kane and Ms. Ken, you like the Pied Piper. You had two people, and now you have got uh, a bunch more. And I, I, I'm, I'm sorry that I did not have uh, all the students on the, uh, on the, the slide. Um, but you will be thoroughly impressed, I am sure, with the next presentation. If you just give me one minute. So you're just gonna you're gonna right click, right click, open, right. open up the link. Okay, yeah. awesome. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Perfect. Good evening. Hello. Good Hello. evening. Uh, my name is Allison Kane, and I'm here to talk about our video production class. Um, our class, um, this is an intro level class where students learn the basics of film and um, video production. We can divide that up into two different um, categories. You have the um, film portion, which is storytelling um, and the kind of the long arc of the narrative. And then you have broadcasting, which is the short clips and the short um, narrative. Um, throughout the year, they learn everything um, associated with the equipment in our beautiful new space. This is our um, third full year using that space. It was open when the school started, which is when the class started, but the, the room was not completed. So we kind of did it more of a storytelling in my classroom that year and kind of how to storyboard and write scripts. Um, so I like to think of it as the third year is when you kind of get your footing and kind of know what's going to work with the space that you have.
have. This year I have a class um, of kind of overachievers. They're, they're quite fabulous. This is a team that I brought with me. And one of the um, assignments that we had, um, we call it NR Rocks, in which they have to take all of the equipment that they've learned, all the terminology that they've learned, all the editing that they've learned, the software that they've learned, and then they have to apply it to a narrative. It's basically a long version of a broadcast. So if you were to watch um, a, a clip about North Reading on Channel 4 News, it would be, you know, 10, 15 seconds, 20 seconds. So this being one of their first ones that they put together, they have a time limit of up to four minutes to kind of convey a message. But they have to stay on point. They have to have a specific task at hand. I'm going to give um, them a quick, quick moment to talk about how they did that, and then we're going to watch the video that they created. Um, well, we started off with a kind of. Uh, we started off with a, <laughs> what? a broad uh, brainstorming, uh, kind of just to get us thinking about what kind of shots we want to take, what, how we want to angle it, what we want to concentrate on, who we want to interview, and like ask questions to. And then um, we spent a long period of time like getting all the shots we wanted in and out of school, uh, using the cameras and all of our resources to try and get like the best out of it and then we spent a long time editing it and we had like happy little debates like we uh <laughs> we um took our we took all of our ideas and we put them together to create uh and our rocks and do you just want to say anything yeah, okay perfect all right so let's let's watch the clip right click right click Kids are at the high school open to new experiences. Some kids uh, do things just to, to do, but generally, from what I've seen, at least the things that I participate in, uh, I'm getting kids to do things to, to do them well. And you see kids kind of mature over the, the four year process. You get to see kids in a totally different environment than just an academic classroom. And I really do.
Have our own drone. Yeah, that was cool. We dumped, we but it makes me want to. <laughs> makes me want to get one. <laughs> they got it from ro right. that was robotics. Their smell. They're kind of a <laughs> right. Yeah. They're a dynamic team. Um, yeah, that's right. yeah. So <laughs> it's pretty now. Did you want that? I don't need that back. Okay. No, thank you. Um, so um, this class, we've been able to put together some really great um, footage in the last few years, and um, we've been noticed by. Um, I'm never one to shy away from a mic. Uh, we've been noticed um, outside our community, and we actually have a really cool project coming up that we wanted to touch upon. Um, we're actually working with um, our police and detective department here in North Reading, and the students are putting together um, a film to be viewed not only in North Reading, but in the state um, based on opioid. Um, abuse and the the effects that it has on students and so um, I'm gonna let them talk just very briefly about that we started that last week Sandy, you step up? <laughs> well, just a brief overview um, so basically miss came came to us and mentioned that uh, we had been contacted to do a video about opioid addiction and um, basically everyone in the class is just very excited about it because not only do we get to um, do something that we all really care about, but we feel like it's going to impact more than just North Reading. Um, it's, it just feels like a really unique opportunity and something that I can't get from any other class. Um, I, I, I've never gotten so much out of school work done and never been so excited to go to class. So we're going to be putting that together, and um, we have a fast turnaround time. So we're using um, our class as basically a business, as if this was their 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 job. We have deadlines; it has to be done, um, and they have to put together their perspective, their points of view. They have to go out and they have to interview, and then put together the stories in a respectful manner, in a way that we can tell something that's pretty important to to everyone. So like a public service thing or an educational thing? Or? Yes, kind of an educational thing, absolutely. Um, we're actually, this is kind of part one, um, and this was brought up to us kind of recently, uh, actually very recently, and we decided to jump on it. Um, like I said, I have a really cohesive class this year, um, and my teams are just fantastic. And they all have to take different roles, just like you're doing in, in the real world in film. So that's what they do with this. They're going to be interviewing family members and how it's affected them. Um, and then bringing their stories to life and letting us know that it affects all of us and that we're all here for you and we all want to make sure that everyone is safe and loved and it's gonna be quite a powerful message. So the, the comment about um, loving everything about the class and never getting so much out of school you know of course we want to hear that all the time that's great but it's really true I got a great education I went to UMass and I was a journalism major but the best thing I got out of it was working for the daily newspaper they had because I was there all the time. I, mean, I went to my, other than in my classes and doing other kids' college, other things college kids do, I also, um, I spent all my time at the UMass Daily Collegian. And that's how, you know, that's how you get a job. Yeah. It's experience. So here's an idea, and this may be crazy, and AJ and John are probably going, why is he even saying something like this? But is there like a, could you do, not say a video yearbook, but you know, a video every year that students would have the option, seniors, graduating seniors would have the opportunity to buy if they wanted to. You know, uh, highlights of the year, sports, the, the play. What, I know we have to be careful with the play and what we can take, but those kinds of things. So, you know, 15, 20 minute video that kids might want to buy and have as a keepsake rather than kind of a static. Your books are still cool, but they're static and they're not. Right. So I've, I've honestly never thought about it. So it's just a suggestion. Look into, I think right. it might be might be a cool project. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else? No, that was great. I yeah. think there might be some local realtors interested in your first yeah. video. There. <laughs> exactly. Pretty, right. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Made the town look really, really great. So. Yeah, yeah, and they had different perspectives. The the jo the job was NR Rock, so different people took different ones. They took the community, some took the school, some. It's kind of cool. Is that? Guy that was on there, Peter Kane, any relation to you? I don't know him. He right. seemed to be in the witness curious. protection program. Know. He was in the dark. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know. That's a bad, it's better. Than that. Watch, uh, it's yeah, a much better picture. I know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, get him out. Yeah. 
Yeah. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Nice job. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That's really good. Yeah. yeah he's the president of the union. Okay. Tech Infusion. Um, but we're actually uh, going to take a little detour to Reality Street um, with the Reality Fair and Miss Amy Luckowitz. Come on up. Before Amy gets started, I, I do want to consider it. Sometimes when times are bad, have we ever considered an unreality fair? <laughs> or a <laughs> noted <fantasy> fair? <laughs> that could work. Fantasy fair. <laughs> Thanks for having me, everybody. Uh, it's very nice to be here not talking about substance use disorders. I'm here to talk about the developmental side of youth services, the, the more fun side of youth services. Um, and so I just want to talk a little bit about where this program came from and to thank the volunteers that made it happen. So uh, Ms. LaPrette mentioned this is our second year of doing this. And the origin of this program kind of goes back um, pretty much to right when I was hired. Um, the chair of North Reading Youth Services, Peter Majane, is also a uh, local banker and he is a member of the North Reading Rotary Club. And he has a friend and a partner in a neighboring Rotary Club in the Shoba Valley area who did this program. And he said, Amy, I want you to bring this to North Reading. Can you please come and go with me to one of these? And I was like, all right, Peter, it's not like I don't have my hands full. I'd just taken on this job. So I went with Peter and what ended up happening is we took their program made notes over the course of four we attended four of them as volunteers took the pieces that we liked kind of scrapped some things we didn't like um, made it actually a little bit more user friendly for diverse learners and we brought it here to North Reading last year it is a program that was in high demand not by the kids but by the parents so when I would talk to the parents about what sorts of programs they thought youth services should bring here and uh, financial literacy kept coming up and so this is a program that met that need quite well. We were very happy with it. So what happens, to walk you through the program, is the students prior to beginning that day, which happens on one day, um, the past two years it has happened on the Thursday before Veterans Day, same day every year so far, um, the students ahead of time kind of decide what they think they want to be when they grow up. And they don't know why we're asking that question. And we take that information and um, Eric Evans from North Reading Rotary sends it through uh, the paycheck system and creates basically uh, an annual salary for every student. And that's what you see there on the ledger. We do not purposely restrict the students about what they want to select. And I'll, it, the reason we don't do that is because some get very specific. So for example, uh, this year we had a student that wanted to be, if I get this right, a cartographer cato entomologist. She wants to map where bugs live. And that was a really specific thing. And so we didn't want to restrict the kids in any way about what they selected for jobs. A lot of demand for that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a lot of demand. Very specific and specialized. And so what you see at the top of that ledger there is the annual salary for an incoming or brand new person to that vocation. And that's really important to know that it's an entry level position because we had a lot of people, for example, who chose marketer. And they got their pay stub there, and they said, oh, I'm supposed to make a lot more than that. And I'd say, how do you know that? Well, my mom's in marketing, and she makes a lot more. And I said, well, how long has your mom been doing that? And they go, oh, all right, gotcha. So that's kind of the first reality shock right there, is the students look at what that annual salary is. And they're pretty accurate. I'll also pause and let you know that if any of the students um, put that they were undecided, we gave them an entry-level teacher salary. And that was intentional. My father taught high school for 40 years. And I have a whole lot of respect for what educators do. And I wanted the, t the kids to have that opportunity as well to see what an entry level teacher might make. And so uh, we covered that base. Then what you say after that in the ledger is deductions, real world deductions. It's so real world, in fact, that if the students made over the 25%, uh, uh, excuse me, the 15% federal tax bracket, you can see there, most made uh, around 25, we did flex up and we flexed down. Also, you'll see uh, around the first or second deduction down under monthly budget, a student loan, around 10%. We did that for every single student unless they A, chose a military vocation, or B, chose a vocation that needed an advanced, sal uh, advanced education. So all the doctors, the anesthesiologists, the psychologists got much more taken out of their, of their student loans. So then the students were given some instructions, purposefully vague. We kept them very vague so that they would kind of have that experience of their own going around and shopping 
for stuff that they would need in the real world. And that's where you see on the left-hand column required, required if, or optional. We also had a little twist in the plan where we had a wheel of life. The students all had to spin the wheel of life at least once, but they could spin twice. If they spun twice, it was going to be cumulative. So if they hit big for 250 like this student did, the next spin was minus 100. They would have to make that a net number. And what they did not know is that the wheel was actually weighted for a two-thirds negative outcome because that's kind of real life. It's not often that you hit the lottery. It's also uh, more common that you drop your cell phone in the toilet. And so those are so, sort of things that we had on the wheel of life. It happens. I know, but I love that. I love the contrast. Yeah. <laughs> the lottery, drop your cell phone in the toilet. In the toilet. There you go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, one of the interesting things about the Wheel of Life is last year, uh, my father was at actually volunteered for this event. He sat at that table next to Frank Ferraro, who was a longtime member of the uh, Youth Services Committee, who was also a former educator. And they did their own in impromptu, unplanned tally. And last year, almost 100% of the boys spun twice, regardless of their first outcome spin. <coughs> Something that we thought was a little bit interesting. Hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. A couple of the options that the kids had um, in the course of the reality fair and shopping for these things are things like getting a roommate. And this is where we really saw how, how seriously the kids took this. Here's a great example of that. We had two boys who were negotiating rooming together. One made a pretty high income. He was going to be a doctor. And the other one was going to be a contractor, an entry level contractor, and didn't make enough that he could live on his own. And he wanted to live with the doctor. And so they entered into this negotiation as if it was really happening to the point where the doctor kept saying, I'm not living with you. I'm not going to take care of you. I'm not like you're an adult. You have to get this together. <laughs> Argued back and forth. And finally, the doctor turned to the contractor and said, fine, you can live with me, but you have to start wearing deodorant. <laughs> the things that the kids were saying were a riot. I said this last year and I didn't get to do it because I didn't have enough volunteers. But I want somebody to follow them around next year, taking anecdotal notes. They're so funny and taking it so seriously and asking questions that they probably wouldn't really have an opportunity to ask in a classroom. Another example is a group of four boys who, um, at the time, last year, Mike Prisco was overseeing life insurance. And these boys approached him and they said, all right, we have a question. And I want to say this, that they were dead serious in this question. They were not trying to be jerks in any way. And they said, "If we're all living together, the four of us. If we take a life insurance policy against this guy and we knock him out, We'd, we'd kill him. Do we get to collect on that life insurance? And to Mike Prisco's credit, he answered their question in the real way it would be, including the law, but they weren't trying to be jerks. What they were trying to do is figure out how life insurance worked, and they thought, there's a glitch in that system, until he pointed out that there is not a glitch in that system the way that they think. But where else would they be exposed to life insurance concepts? So it was a great opportunity for them to learn, and they had a really great experience, we hope. Um, this year, again, we took some survey information after, and I have attached those results, including all of their actual uh, feedback in their own words. We did not uh, tweak it in any way. I also thought it was really interesting to see the top five vocations being nurse, biomed, business, criminal justice, and doctor. These top five are completely different than what they were last year. The top five included a lot of accountants and a lot of computer programmers. So uh, that was a big change this year. Also, the most useful informational tables being insurance and understanding what insurance meant, banking, housing, retirement, and transportation. One of the things we added this year was an option for military service being the reserves. Um, and we had Detective O'Leary stationed there. He is a, a retired Army veteran, and we had him stationed there. And the students didn't really pick it unless, until they realized that they got to wipe out their student debt and add in an actual uh, additional income. Um, regarding how the students completed this program was that all they had to do is complete all the least required things, minimum things being required, and check out with a financial advisor with a positive uh, outcome, even if that positive outcome was a dollar. The best part, I think the learning really happened, was at that one-on-one -on -one kind of counseling service with the, with the um, financial advisors. For example, if a student came, and we encourage them to go early and often, if the student was approaching the financial advisor with a negative $200 already and hadn't even bought food, the credit advisor would say, well, I see here you're driving an SUV. What else could we do to, to make that a little bit more affordable? 
And the credit, um, excuse me, the financial advisors were all trained to not give the answers. They were all taught to ask open-ended questions and lead the students to that answer. So instead of saying, well, John, you cannot afford that SUV. I need you to go back and make a change. They would say things like, how else could we make this affordable? What else could you do to earn some extra income? They all had the option to um, earn extra income in the form of a virtual part-time job. But what the students did not know is that that job was not going to be just handed to them. They were asked open-ended questions that were unrelated to the job. So for example, if you went out and tried to get a job as a barista at Starbucks, they wouldn't ask you, tell me what you know about mochas. They would say, why should I hire you? What sets you apart? What makes you a good part of my team? They also got to negotiate their salary, which they did not know they could do. So uh, oh, I'm going to give you $11 minimum wage. And they could say back, no, I, I'd like 12. Can you give me 12? They didn't know they could do that until they were in the moment. So purposely, a lot of this was left untold to them ahead of time so that they could make real world decisions. And there's a lot of volunteers who are there in that in this room. And I want to thank you. Michael was a volunteer. Thank you very much. You were there. Uh, I forgot. Nope, I guess not. Nobody else here. But thank you very much. It was. I hope you. I hope you found it fun. Well, it was very what table were you at? I was at the food table. Food table. Yeah. A mandatory food table. Yep. And um, if you look at the example that you see here, by the way, the math wasn't entirely accurate, but if you look at the example I gave you, that person spent more on clothes than food. <laughs> I noticed that. <laughs> they were at Janine's table. <laughs> table. And it was kind of neat, because they did have some options within those tables. So I suspect that $50 a month were on Uggs, the UGG level. You would know better. I'm sorry, say that. Were they on the UGG level? Or was it the, like the Old Navy level, that $50 a month? I don't, rem I don't remember. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so thank you very much, and we hope to do it again next year. We did have a couple of the seniors who went through it last year asked if they could do it again, which was uh, which was good. So we were happy about that. Just one quick question: Sure. Who participated? Oh, I'm sorry, all the juniors, the entire junior class. Okay. I so didn't mean to say that. One, I'd love to participate next year as a volunteer. So please Sold. remember to contact because I didn't realize it was happening until it was too late. So. And, and two, um, was, any, was there a Bitcoin table at the, uh, <laughs> at the reality fair? Anybody selling Bitcoins? No, but funny you mentioned that. One of the uh, pieces that we, we always think about what can we add next time. And something that came up was something about stock markets. Well, I was going to mention investing. You, yeah. I mean, you have savings and retirement, which requires investing, but stock market or bonds or just you know Wall Street basically could be a category. I, I think that we might consider that. And I think you have a number of financial people involved, right? So Certainly. they could obviously play that role. Not my level, but definitely we have some experts uh, in that. Yeah. This is great. Thank you. Good luck in your sweater contest. Thanks. I will tell you, as I was leaving town hall, I saw the town administrator run to his car to get his. All I got to say is very serious. Best on, and with Scott's <laughs> outfit, if we lose, we'll never win anything. <laughs> I don't we'll never win anything. On the record, I have to see everybody. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Safe answer. Record, you Safe great. answer. <laughs> Thanks, Amy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amy. Okay. Um, so I'll be presenting uh, the last uh, program on our agenda: Greater Connectivity with Plus Portals. So you may be aware that our student information system is Administrators Plus, and that is a product of the Redeker uh, software company. Uh, we use Administrators Plus in the uh, administrative office for scheduling, attendance, grades, contact information, and kind of all the record keeping of student information. Um, in the past, we had then used a grade quick as an online teacher gradebook and um, Edline as a portal for students and parents to access great information. Redeker has come out with the Plus Portals product and it syncs completely with our existing Administrators Plus software package. So with this, we've got uh, gradebook, calendars, communication, school-wide docs, assignments, and it's that, that whole next level of kind of tying all the information together. The, the, the presentation that I'm going to kind of get you through today, uh, this evening, is just a couple of slides that I think effectively present who gets what and how it works. So this is a portal page that is a, uh, a, a fictional teacher. Um, 
And when the teachers log into their grade book, they log in through the portal. So they get this. And each, um, you know, each uh, block here is one of their classes. So they can then click onto this blue grade book, and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. But that's kind of all specific portal information around that class. And a well-rounded teacher, AJ. I'm sorry? It's a well-rounded mm -hmm. teacher. Yeah, look at the look at he's teaching. Unbelievable. Yeah. I, I, Must I, have about half a dozen degrees. For an interview. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, you've got a number of tabs up here, and we, we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But live streaming classes now? Um, so once into the portal, the teacher can use this as a lesson planner, uh, track student progress, uh, obviously log scores, homework. Uh, all of these tabs are active tabs. Um, getting into the teacher grade book, it looks like this. So, uh, and again, this is there's a lot going on here. It's uh, the, the, one of the major uh, advantages to the to the product uh, that I you know have worked with for a number of years is it's it's pretty intuitive. It's pretty simple. It looks like there's a lot there, but it doesn't take a lot of work to uh, to kind of figure it out. Additionally, what I can do is when I sync an assignment a new assignment into my grade book, it automatically can link it to the student's portal and shows up as, that's a new assignment. I can do it one time and put it into all the similar classes that I teach for that course, or every course that I teach if it's kind of a generic assignment that I want to share. So it's, you're doing between one and 10 things kind of with one click. Um, and then all of these individual student reports is the minute you click on a student name, it goes right to that student, uh, individual student, and you get their record. Now from the other side, so here's Adam Adams and his daughter Amy. Now when the parent logs in and the student, all right, you'll notice that this parent has access to his other children as well, so the, uh, the information is tied across the family, uh, even if they're in different schools. And again, the same access to attendance information, report card information, course specific grades and averages, recent scores on assignments. If you were to scroll down a little bit on the page, you'd see, um, again, kind of uh, more tabulated attendance information. We have not, we have not, uh, this is something you could log in, I guess, if you wanted to track student, student, student behavior in your class. We are not sharing student uh, discipline information out, Cheating. but as the teacher, you could certainly monitor it and keep that record on your own, okay? Not very happy with it. But again, yeah. this, so, so this, this portal is essentially the parent's window into the student's record. So as a student, when they open it up, they see the same information. Is not from obviously from the parent the parent angle. So AJ on the discipline, they'd be there, but the parents don't see it. Is that what you said? Or we don't we it would we're not using again, it for that again. Well, that's if that's classroom information, they can keep that within their classroom. But it's not front office administrative oh, okay. information. If they've been given say a, an office detention for something, that doesn't filter on to okay. every you know it doesn't go with them. Yeah, I get it into the into their account. Okay. Um, okay, and now, so now further down, so homework assignments, and, and you know, you can um, attach PDFs to all of this information. So again, if I put that, um, if, I, if I create that column in the gradebook, here's the assignment, and you have to, you know, read this, uh, read this article, and then I attach the article, it'll show up here, and then the student can access it, parent can access it, and track it that way. Um, Student links and files, so I've got some school-wide information in our kind of a school-wide folder with respect to our rubrics, with respect to um, our program of studies will go in there, and uh, you know a number of other kind of just general information that we have on the website, but one more place to put it for easy uh, access, again, for both students, parents, etc. I just have one quick question. Yes. How does this connect with Google Docs? Because I know like a lot of the kids are using Google Classroom, and is there a way to kind of connect these two? You could put links in. 
can have a link in your assignment yeah. and then click on that link and it can put you onto a Google Doc. Okay. This, this offers, um, I would say, many of the same things, obviously, that the Google Docs program. Because I think that's where platform. most of the kids are comfortable and where the teachers are at Google right now. Lash so I'm just Google wondering, Google. you know, are there aspects of this that maybe won't be used by some teachers or? Well, we haven't, I haven't put specific mandates on around who, who needs to use what when. Okay. You can do online quizzes with this. So there are a lot of parallels. Okay. And I'm certainly not saying to somebody, listen, if you set this up in Google Docs, you've got to transfer everything okay. over. Um, but I think there are a number of people that, that maybe aren't using Google Docs. And if I have to use it or start using something, why not start with this? Um, you know, I think there's, you know, it's, it's the tech world. There, there's people drawn to uh, systems and things that they like or, or find easy. Uh, the fact that this, you know, offers a lot uh, around, in, you know, kind of not only the, the basics, but also the scaffolding um, is nice, is a, is a nice opportunity for us. Um, I think, yeah, so, um, you know, we obviously use Blackboard Connect to send out messages, but again, the same thing is uh, possible here with notifications and alerts. Um, I, I, so I'm trying to be mindful of saying, okay, now you know you, you needed to look three places for things, now you need to look seven places for things. So um, obviously there's, there's pros and cons to that. But if, again, if I'm, if I'm a teacher, every section that I teach has a calendar. And I can start throwing that information up on that calendar and I can just click a, click a button that says, you know, if this test is gonna be show on calendar and it'll show up on the kid's calendar. Um, on, on their portal. So there's, you know, uh, the, the, again, the, the idea of the, the fluidity of the information and the opportunities for, for uh, both parents, students, teachers to all kind of work with the same important information, um, I think is, is a huge plus to this. Um, I think, is yes, the, I think is that's kind of it. Online course registration going to come into this? Yeah, so we're, we're going to get to that in a second. Yes. I, I have one question, and I'm not the person to ask this because I don't know how to evaluate it, but when you're putting personal information like grades online, and what's the security of this database? And again, I have no idea how to evaluate, but as a parent, I know some people will be worried about you know, the level of security when your grades are up there and other information about, about the students. Well, um, I would say it's, it's certainly password protected. There's individual accounts. There's something that, you know, there's, there's a, a number of layers of permissions that I need to set through to make sure I want to clear certain information into certain areas of the portal. So uh, I would say that this is, this is certainly the pathway that every school is going to in some version of this. Um, could, parent, could parents opt not to have certain information on there? Or? There is always, there's always a, uh, I believe there's always an opportunity or a parent to, to opt out of certain things, yes. Scott, this is a, it's a closed system, so it's gonna be pretty difficult. I, yeah. I have no idea. I'm just unless sure. someone really wanted to hack Always into it, it's yeah. not. I mean, it's still a web-based right. yeah. right. web system. It's something right. I could see, I could see concern over it, so I'm gonna ask, I mean. HR. It I is mean, this is, I'll tell you, the good thing about this is, this is what kids who go to college are gonna be using. Every college, mm -hmm. almost all your assignments yeah. and everything is on a system like this, so yeah. it's good that we kinda got the kids yeah. Again, and, and, and I have less concern about like having assignments on there, being able to like access it for them. It's just more, again, I could see some parents having concerns about having the grades, for example, no, no on there. Certainly, no one's contacted me saying yeah, I'm uncomfortable. Teachers not the question. Yeah. No, you're right. I mean, yeah. online, the online, the, the web, the web, the web grade book we've had. We've had these for, several years. Yeah, six or seven years now. Right. Well, they, this is this replaced the headlines. Correct. Right. Okay. Which was the portal. Right. Yeah. AJ, when a student turns 18. Is there anything that precludes a parent from accessing that student's information without his consent or her consent? Certainly if a, uh, a student were to say, I don't want my parents to be the, um, you know, the, the, having access to my information, that would certainly be a conversation that I would have with a student. But so, learn, okay. but, you know, but that's a good question. They, have, they, they, they college, have the right to do that. Because most of your seniors are going to be 18. You have to get, a, you have to get approval. Right. Yeah. From right to yeah. access. You certainly have the right to do that. I would like to have a conversation with them just right. to make sure I had a that, clear understanding. That seems like a reasonable approach. Yeah. There's yeah. a provision. Just curious. Yeah. yeah there's, there's language in the handbook. Well, you'd well, have to you'd have to get them to sign off. I would think. Right. What, what, what permissions are 
Yeah. What permissions are required in general? I mean, mm -hmm. do parents sign off in the beginning saying it's okay? Or college. Opt so out? When, my, when my son or daughter or anybody's son or daughter goes to college, they ask um, the student has a right to deny parents access, access yeah. to the website for, that has grades, course assignments, yeah. everything on it. And the, if the student has to sign off on parents having access, yeah. 18 or older. Mm -hmm. And for younger ones, I mean, I would just, you would just automatically it's on there, whatever's on there, unless you opt out. You have to opt out, I think. Younger, it's, there's no, the, the student. No, has, but the, the parent, student parents has, could opt, student, opt out. I guess parents. The student could, could potentially opt them out, depending on what the policy is. But at 18, the student can opt out. I would just, there, there is language in the student handbook that speaks to students who have reached 18 years of age okay. and, what, and what certain rights are allowed. A lot of college students, I'm not speaking from experience, but just that. Potentially wouldn't want their parents to know what their grades are sure. at the end of the year. But again, that hasn't been my that. experience here. Yeah. But those, you know, when it comes up, we'll certainly follow the language in the handbook, and that, that, that's certainly relevant to the law. Thanks. So, uh, kind of where, you know, <coughs> how do we move forward from kind of the, the benefits that we've gained already from implementing this? Looking ahead, we're looking at course requests to be completed online. Well, what would happen is you make essentially a, a grade specific uh, template, release it to the students. They would select the courses that, that they have access to, um, which really streamline the process and that, you know, as a sophomore, I'm not gonna take AP uh, Calc BC, so it's not gonna show up as an option. So that kind of streamlines that with, with direct um, link to the program of studies. So I can look at the course, call it up, let me read about this course in the, in, you know, uh, in the profile, and then look at the other course in the profile. Oh, maybe I'll go with this one. There's an opportunity for a parent to uh, provide a recommendation information, for a teacher to provide recommendation information, or the guidance counselor to review the, uh, the information all in that course request process. Well, then the link to the scheduling piece, and then too. It, yeah, no, well, then that, that would save so, so much yeah. time. So from there, this it gets pushed huge. all into, it gets pushed all back into the right. Administrative Plus right. program. Right. And it starts yes. to that's sink. Huge. It, that's huge. All, that, all that paper, data yeah. entry, it's that's yeah. all gone. Yeah. Uh, contact and student information. So again, right now, we're using um, yeah. that's good. Um, family ID. So we could phase out family ID and start to again have kind of one system where uh, but the parents have to worry about keeping track of or logging okay. into or how many yeah. logins yeah. do I have? What was my password for this? Again, paperless reporting. I haven't, I'm, I'm not um, comfortable right now at a point where we're saying we're not gonna mail you a report card. Uh, if we can shut this off for a second for the, for the, uh, the community. <laughs> I could not, right now, as a parent, I am not prepared to open my own senior and sophomores portals. My wife does all of that. So, <laughs> I, you know, uh, unfortunately, I, I would say, well, I want to see the report card. Did it come in the mail yet? And mm -hmm. My wife will say, well, just, you, you know, you got to look on the portal. So, uh, I don't even know what the password is here. Where's the report card? So, um, I think there are those parents that are, you know, like me, very much saying, well, I want, I still want to see paper here. So I, we're good. I think we're going to get to that, but it's certainly not something I want to do. I strongly urge moving in that direction. Yes. You don't get a report card in college. You don't, you know, I, everything's so, online. I, I, I'm, I'm with you 100%, but right now, we're, we're, we still have kind of family ID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have a streamlined way for, you can have all the Yeah, I'm saying one. a few years down the road, not yeah. tomorrow. Oh, definitely, definitely. It may, may be a few, but not, we'll be looking certainly not by mid-year exam. We're right, right, right. <laughs> Um, AJ, I, my kids told me to stop getting report cards 10 years, years ago. <laughs> You're saying that report cards? Uh, <laughs> Were kids even in high school 10 years ago? Oh my God. So enhanced communication. Again, <laughs> the, uh, the ease with which the student, student can contact the teacher. Uh, the teacher can send an email out to the student or set, again, uh, give quiz information or provide uh, specific instruction. Um, Again, I just uh, I think it's a it's a huge uh, benefit to be as synced as we are with this program and it, it to be as comprehensive as as we found it to be. Uh, data reports, uh, assessment analysis. Um, it's it's very comprehensive. So I think it's a real step in the right direction. Any questions for AJ? For the record, Mr. Venezia's kids stopped getting report cards ten years ago because they were already out of. High school. 
Mr. West goes to six you best years of my kids' lives. So. I, I want to acknowledge AJ and the staff, the tech staff, that, that really in the summer started to pull, put this together. This was a massive undertaking. You can imagine 812 students to get all of the, the data mm. ready to go for the opening to school. And, 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 then, and then to almost simultaneously yeah. <laughs> think, about, think about introducing the online yeah. scheduling feature, which I think you met with me about two weeks ago, maybe 10 days ago. Yep. And yep. Mr. Roser, our new coordinator, not new to the district, but new in his position as a coordinator of school counseling services, has been working with AJ to, to introduce that. And I think that's a, a significant advancement in how we uh, manage student data on the scheduling end. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be very interesting. And you're going to be well, ready to do that for this winter we, we, and spring, we'll, right? Yeah, for, we'll be doing it this spring. For next school year. So those two initiatives, I think, were pretty significant. I will tell you, it was a little bit of a stressful August when we are really saying, well, you know, let's start getting teachers yeah. in and get them familiar with the, with the new uh, the new gradebook. Um, and I think, it's again, it's credit to the software. That's it's pretty simple. Software's it's pretty good. easy to use. Yeah. Um, and it, it allows for a lot of different variations on, on things and a lot of uh, uh, adaptability you know, mm. in its design. So, Great. Well, thanks, AJ. That's a really um, well-rounded uh, presentation tonight. So thank you and your staff. No, we, got, we got to touch the technology side, the, the art side, hear a little bit of what's going on at the uh, administration and technology and communications. And also, it's great you know, that we have the student report, and, and she did a great job, too. So. Um, it's just a well-rounded, and I think it, it gives us a really good feeling for what's going on at the high school. And I, I know I speak for the rest of the committee. We continue to be uh, impressed on a weekly, bi-weekly basis when we have students in reporting to us or asking for permission to go on a trip or start new, uh, new extracurricular activities or whatever. It's a great, a great job. And I feel so badly that I left these two students sitting here for an hour. <laughs> Making them sit through this. They're anxious. I should have yeah. moved them up, but I think they got a great education tonight, don't well, you? Are you being punished for anything? <laughs> no, they're not. So what? What are they here for? They just came to watch. No, they. they I think they're. They're, they're requesting they're, travel. Travel. When I travel. And you let them sit here all this time? I thought I didn't. I thought they were part of the group that was presenting. Oh, oh. I, I halfway should, through. I said something too. Halfway through, I could feel the daggers from them. Oh. Be, be my back. <laughs> But I'm sorry. No. This is his first time as chairman. No. <laughs> He's really not. Is that AJ? I am. Thank Great. you. Thanks a lot. Very good job. Great job. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> we'll just hold it to the end. We'll get to the next. Really. Yeah, that's good. We'll hold the end of the end of the agenda. End of the agenda. You. Duncan, do you do you and Mary want to maybe come up? I think you can bring Jerry back. Want to get the groups? <laughs> Jerry, well, don't worry. We'll get your mic for you too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I forget now. <laughs> Duncan, the, the, the committee has a copy of the paper. If you want it on the screen, too. Don't worry, we'll, we'll get it for you. I can. I can. I don't think. Oh. Yeah. Why don't you? Yeah. Mr. Webster, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. It'll take a minute to pull it up, if you, or you just want to work off this copy. This is fine. The paper's fine. I don't have. I don't have mine in front. Oh, I have it. Yeah. yeah. Duncan, why don't you and Mary come over here? I have a feeling we're going to. The microphone. Don't forget yes. worries. You can talk from the podium, okay? Poor kids. So next we have. Um, Thank you. Duncan McNeil and Mary Madden, who I cruelly made sit through an hour of school committee meeting, and they're going to present to us on the North Reading High School student council trip proposal. Let's go right ahead. So our trip is the ooh, our trip is the MASC annual spring conference, um, March 7th through the 9th, at the Hyannis uh, Cape Cod Resort Conference Center. Thank you. Um, what it is, is MASC is a statewide organization where it's the Massachusetts Association of Student Councils, and this is their annual conference where they host workshops, motivational speakers, and we even raise money for a charity through the Polar Plunge. And it's a experience for students to get to know others, network throughout the state, and really grow and motivate themselves for the upcoming year to come. Do you want to talk about so the Polar Plunge raises money for the Special Olympics of Massachusetts, which um, MASC works closely with through um, unified sports such as bocce, which they have um, a few tournaments throughout the year. Um, so each year, uh, the members of the council going will raise money to um, donate to this organization. And then on the first day of the conference, they, we all run into the water. And we often come up with themes. So on the slide, you can tell that we were or hopefully you can tell that we were a killer fruit salad. <laughs> so we all dressed up as sharks and fruit, um, which is our theme this year. So who will be going? Since North Reading is a 
uh, Gold Council of Excellence this year. We can bring 16 members from the council and hope, and we're going to apply for an extra room and hopefully um, be able to bring four extra members who weren't the first choice, but they definitely deserve to go as well. Once, um, so yeah, like once I said, like like I said, once registration is over, we're going to apply for another room. Um, why MASC is important to us, I believe as a council, um, coming in freshman year, we didn't really know what student council was, and when we attended these first conferences, we got to see really how truly amazing it was because it was a way to see what our hard work could put off and become, and the people it got to help, and like you get to hear these people people's experiences of how student council and MASC have changed their lives and made them into better people and let them find themselves. And it's a great way to connect with others. I've talked to many who have graduated from high school and oftentimes in work they run into people they work with who have been and were a part of MASC and recognize them. So you really form those lifelong friendships and connections that you can use later on in life. Any questions? I know we take this trip on an annual basis. Um, I'm sure that Claire Madden is going to far surpass the most recent Madden who walked the halls of North Reading High School, don't you think, Jerry? Mary, Mary Madden. Mary, I'm sure Mary will surpass. Oh, is that her brother? Dan's Dan, your brother, right? Dan, your brother? Yeah, he, wanted every, he wanted to say hi to everyone. To <laughs> of course he did. He's so smooth. Is he still supporting Trump? Or? Um, he's not 100% sure on that one. He's no, in Alabama. I'm not 100% sure. Okay. He's not 100% sure. He, him. Okay, all right. He's in Alabama, right? right? Yeah, he just got back last oh, month. Was he working on the uh, Roy Moore, right? No, no. <laughs> he goes to the University of Alabama. Oh, he does? Yeah. Oh. He's a, isn't he, isn't he, uh, he's an ROTC football? too? Yeah, ROTC. It's excellent. Have either of you done the polar plunge yet before? Yes. yes. Is that cold? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do the advisors have to do it too? Um, our, advis our advisors don't have to, but Miss St. Arno does. Oh, good. So now you will have two advisors, right? Because we, it is our advisor. Yes. Okay. Two. Usually Miss Smith. Miss Smith. Smith usually the library media specialist usually. Miss St. Arno? With Miss St. Arno, yes. Okay. And just another question. Are these all four years? Like, do you have freshmen, sophomore, juniors? Yeah. Juniors um, as a council, we try and include freshmen, sophomore, mm -hmm. juniors, and seniors because we see it more as an opportunity rather than an experience. So it's an opportunity to get those underclassmen the experience and the um, comfortability with talking to other people and networking them and getting themselves out there. I know that this year we have three freshmen already going, and if we get the extra room, there will be four freshmen attending. Mary, please tell Dan that we think that you're going to surpass his okay. his his feats here at North Reading High School. He will appreciate that. And uh, Duncan, you're are you are you running for uh, yeah, president of of president of MASC? So if I win, I will be the president of the Massachusetts Association of Student Council. Good luck. Dan Dan was president. Dan right? was president <laughs> last. Oh, Dan can do it. You can. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Bernard, Mr. Chairman, I, I want to commend Duncan on his uh, campaign theme, his slogan. What is it? Running on Duncan. <laughs> it's great. It's Simple, but it's Duncan. very clever. And he had, yeah, it's pretty good. Good. We have any other questions for Mary or Duncan? Good luck and behave yourself. So at this, at this time, I'll obtain a motion to approve the student council trip. So, so moved. moved. Motion by Mrs. Venezia. Can I have a second, second. by Ms. Embriano? Any further questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thanks. Good luck. Thank you. Sorry again for making you wait. <laughs> Here you go. Yeah. Jeez, bro. Yeah, that's, that's a rookie mistake. I know. I think I was new to the school committee or something. <laughs> that's a rookie mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I was wondering about that. I'm like, oh, I guess they don't want to split up. The okay, next we have our annual uh, Cape Cod trip for the hockey team. I don't think there's uh, really any questions here. Uh, there may be questions. It's the same trip every year, basically, right? We used to go to Martha's Vineyard, but now we're going to yep, go to Sandwich, sandwich right? <clears throat> and it's a very good tournament, high-quality tournament. I know last year I think Lowell Catholic played in it, and uh, I don't know if right. they're in it again this year. I saw them early. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Eventually. And they went to the Division finals. They won it, I think, didn't they? they did. I think they lost in the finals. They lose in the finals? Because I read an article in The Globe saying that they were coming back, coming yeah. back strong yeah. because yeah. of they because they lost the state championship. They beat North Reading. A goal with 17 seconds to go, right, Mel? That's right. No, that was Stoneham. Stoneham. Stoneham he lost to Stoneham, and then Stoneham lost okay. to Lowell Catholic. Right. That's right. So, are there any questions? This is the annual trip that the hockey team takes down there. Um, they stay over, what is it, one night or two nights, AJ? It is a, a one-night one night stay. Okay. 
and most of the parents go. Um, and so it's kind of a family thing. You'll see a lot of parents down there on, on this trip. And as I say, we do it annually. We've done it for many years. Started in 99. So that was yeah, the first year. 18, the, it'd be the 18th year. So, so this is the varsity hockey team. Yes. Yes. Yep. Yep. So unless there are any questions, I will entertain a motion to approve the varsity hockey team trip to yeah. the Sandwich Invitational. It has a name. So moved. Someone's name, but I forget. The Invitational Second. Tournament. Yeah. It motion escapes by Jerry. me right now. Second. Second by Janine. What is it? It escapes me right now, the name. It's a, it's a player, a former yeah, player's name or something. But I, I cannot recall it. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very AJ. much. Okay, next we have policies. Are these, again, policies you've been reviewing? These are slightly different, actually. Yeah. Like. We these were these to our attention. These were, these were well. The first one. We've been meeting about MASC, but we're not ready on any of those yet. The first one is something that the attorneys have suggested that we update mm -hmm. the language on, and so the updates were directly from council. And so I, I guess I move for a first reading of policy JGI entitled "Physical Restraint of Students." Well, it's a revised policy, right? Yes, revised. Well, we actually wait but a minute. The, there's quite I don't a bit. see. <coughs> and then we added the regulation, correct? Correct. Okay, and, right. the, and we added JGIR. The development of the regulations is part of the policy. Okay, so it's a revised policy. Revised policy with the, as the red line shows. With new regulations. With regulation with correct. regulations being added. And these the changes were basically recommended or were reviewed and recommended by. School council? Correct. To comply with the laws. Comply with current Correct. state and federal laws, I assume. Correct. Okay. So does that mean nothing? Yes, yeah, so I I move for first reading. So we have a motion by Scott and second by Janine to approve for first reading physical restraint of students, revised policy JGI and to add new regulations. Are there any questions or? I just have a question. Go ahead. Um, I know staff is trained, John. Mm -hmm. I'm listening. Through, you know, CPI, is correct. that correct? Yes. So all of the information in here reflects the, the, CPI the manual. training that the staff undergo. It does, and, and, and it's referenced in I here as see the CPI that reference. manual. Yes. And we conduct either there's there's training for new staff that are interested in being um, members of the of the identified people in each school as part of the team, and then there's also a refresher training that we offer. Any further questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. And then next we have the procurement requirements. So this actually formally was. bids and quotations now Correct. becoming procurement requirements. So this was an MASC one, but this is one that we had held because we were waiting for information from Mr. Connolly, I believe it was. Yep. Correct. Just to make sure that we were in compliance and you know, after further discussion we we moved to well, Ginny and I thought that it was the MASC language was better on this issue. And yeah, so I move for a first reading of policy, revised policy DJED, which we've changed the title um, from bids and quotations to procur procurement requirements in fiscal management section. I believe we're already, for we're already following these guidelines, right, Michael? We follow these guidelines follow already, these guidelines. correct? The biggest change here, which is the need for probably the, the update, was that uh, I believe <coughs> in November of 2016, the regulations changed from what was a $25,000 requirement to, it went to 35 and it right. went to 50, um, and a $5,000 requirement to solicit three quotes to 10,000. Right. So yeah, thresholds this, change. This is also something that at, at one of the board of selectmen meetings I was at, they mentioned in their audit that year that the, I think the town language also changed because mm -hmm. of the same language. This is the reason why we had to, for example, with the, uh, the school field project, we had to go out to bid. We couldn't correct. Just That's you know, an example. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So a motion by Scott, second by Janine. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Okay. 
Next, we have minutes for the November 13th open session. Take a motion. Motion to accept the open session of November 13th. Second. Motion by Janine, second by Julie. Any further discussion? This is just this is the meeting that Mr. Venezi did not attend, correct? Correct. Yes. Okay, so he should not be voting on this. Then. Well, he could if I you wanted to, vote. but yeah. I could still vote. You should know that. I don't know. I was told I wasn't able to vote. No, you can vote. Time. I choose not to. <laughs> but. We have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Yeah. One abstain. Four, four in favor, one abstention. Duly noted. One abstination. Could you please? <laughs> Could you please note that in abstentia, abstentia, abstentia. I'm sure you would have pointed out. I wasn't, I wasn't there. So. Okay. Well, next, we have a budget update. I have to point out, Mr. Mr. Conley. Thank you, uh, Chairman. So the December budget update it was included in your packet, um, <coughs> broken down as we typically do by expenses and payroll, financial activity, through about the middle of December, and there's really not a lot of new information or new trends that was from the November budget update. Um, as reflected on the expense report, you, you, know, you see some funds available on the tuition line item. That's mainly because we did exceed our forecast for prepaying special education tuitions at the end of fiscal year 2017. Um, certainly, you know, principals and budget leaders are still, um, you know, entering um, encumbrances and, and, and processing orders for supplies and materials and equipment as needed. Uh, we have encumbered all the utility expenses, and we're certainly monitoring those utility costs as we are now entering the, the, the heating season. So it's unclear whether or not there will be savings to reapportion in this area or not, um, but we'll certainly continue to monitor th those costs throughout the winter season. Um, I've reported in the past few reports that we certainly, over the summer months and at the start of the school year, we definitely saw a need to um, you know, address some repair needs throughout the district from, you know, plumbing needs, HVAC, heating and cooling repairs, lighting, boiler. So we've certainly addressed these needs, but we continue to monitor these costs closely. Um, the food service program closed out the month of November with a small loss of about $407 uh, net loss. However, that was very uh, close, almost right on what we forecasted for the loss um, for of $409. So. We are still seeing some positive trends throughout the first three months of the school year, September, October, November, for the food service program. Uh, mail counts at the middle school are up by the largest percentage um, so far, up about 12%. The breakfast program at the high school, the, the, those sales are up a little bit from last year. The elementary programs are a little bit up or you know, very similar to last year. So. I will just uh, remind you that there's no general fund subsidy this year, so it's certainly important that we continue to monitor you know, the cost of this program and how this program is doing throughout the fiscal year. On the payroll side, there's nothing significant to re report. Um, you know, most line items are certainly within budgeted amounts. We're certainly seeing a need to fill some long-term leave of absences. Um, so, you know, we could see an increase in our substitute costs, but we're certainly monitoring that throughout throughout this year. And um, but as I said, payroll projections are very close to the budget amounts at this point. I don't open up to any questions. Any questions? Nope. Well, the well, only question I had was, so for food services, because nothing was budgeted, it doesn't show where they're at. Correct. On this, okay. Yeah. <laughs> It just shows um, that there was zero budgeted, but it doesn't show what the actual expense or the loss at this point in the year is. That's correct. I mean, we are, I, will, I will say we are very close <coughs> to what we did forecast. So there was a loss in September. There was a small gain in October and then a small loss in, in November, all very close to what we forecasted. And we forecasted that we would break even at the end of the year. So there's nothing, um, we're not too far off what we had, had budgeted at this point. Uh, we are operating at a loss right now, but that was expected with the September startup cost of September and the short month, um, awesome. month of November. Uh, we look to have a smaller, a, a larger profit in the months of January and, and March and May. Those are the, the, the key months right. for the program that we're on a profit with the, the largest amount of operating days. So we'll continue to, to monitor it. Any more questions? Thanks, Michael. Next, we have bids and donations. Yeah. Julie? Michael. <coughs> I'd like to start with a recommendation to accept with gratitude a donation of 
from Ms. Catherine Tring to support the NRPS robotics program. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yes. I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $1,000 from Teradyne to support the NRPS robotics program. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? I just looked at you and I almost lost concentration there. I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of 14 14th generation used iPads with cases and one iPad 3 valued at approximately $2,910 from NOAA Fisheries Greater Atlantic Regional Office for the sixth grade at NRMS. Second. Questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude an in-kind donation from Amazon Robotics for the following list of computer equipment which will be used by sixth grade students at the middle school with a value of $6,638. Second. Do you want me to list the items? No. no. I, I just wanted to comment on that. I, I've actually been in contact with um, Rebecca Paso Mikulski, who lives in North Reading and is a senior communications marketing slash person. And she says she would, she wants to do a lot more with the schools. She'd love to come in and meet with, come and present in a meeting or meet with us in a Great. meeting. Um, so obviously um, we're wide open to that, yeah. um, working with Amazon Robotics at any chance we can get. So I don't know if, if initially she has to come to a meeting, but I think it's worth her coming in and maybe meeting with uh, Dan Downs and- we've, we've actually done, we've actually been to the Amazon Robotics Great. site. Um, Rebecca's husband is a former student of mine. Oh. And so I've known them for quite a while and they've been a very good partner to us already. And it's probably been about a year that we've been engaged with them. Um, yeah, we got, a, we got a tour of the, the Amazon Robotics facility, Dan Downs, Dr. Daly and I. Um, they're looking to do, they have a, um, uh, a program where their tech staff will actually, they're, they're actually part of their, their responsibilities as employees is they do these kind of almost like a care day that they, right. there are certain hours that they have to give back into the community. So they're, when, we, when they made the donation of the computers last week, we talked about the possibility of having folks out to work with students. Um, so I think there's a, some real opportunities there as our robotics program is starting to you know, really take off, both through the parent effort with FIRST Robotics and also um, in our schools, I think there's you know, some opportunities there. Yeah, I think, I mean, they have you know, corporate social responsibility programs there where they, yeah. you know, they need to work with the community and they, exactly. they really want to and so, um, exactly right. You know, we should stay really close to them, and that, that'd be great. This is a very generous donation. So, uh, Jerry, I wanted to make a motion that Mr. Buckley shut his lights off. <laughs> <laughs> we well, we would, that'll be have to Distract follow this you? motion. Uh, yes. You? <laughs> uh, so we have a motion to accept this generous donation from Amazon Robotics. And we have a second by Janine. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. This is a celebratory part. Staffing. Nothing, John. Nothing, sure. And nothing, uh, bids and donations we've done. Subcommittee updates. We had um, finance planning team, basically the discussion revolved around, we had uh, Representative Brad Jones was there to talk about potential ways that we could work together on um, future grants, 50-50 uh, type grants where we put some skin in the game and maybe get some money from the state and various projects. And we came up, we came, we talked about some ideas about how what things we might want to focus on in, in, in doing that. Um, basically told us that, you know, there isn't gonna be a whole lot of more money in the budget for chapter 70 and um, I don't expect the, um, the budget, uh, uh, the, uh, what do you call it? The foundation budget uh, recommendations to be uh, implemented next year fully. They're gonna try to implement some of them, but that's the biggest issue we face. The other rest of the meeting basically focused on um, how we're going to do budgeting moving forward. Yeah, um, for selectmen this year, we're going to do have each department do kind of a strategic plan. Right. Uh, they're going to start their budget request on December 28th, and I think they're looking for initiatives from each of the departments right. similar to what what we do. do. Yeah. Uh, in addition to that, I think we're they yeah. said that we're million two hundred sixty seven thousand dollars below level funding though, right? Right. Um, from last year. So we're starting out with about the same number I think we started out with last year. John did an excellent job of uh, making a presentation to the uh, committee about um, the, the needs of the school department, including a, a, a contract negotiations with the teachers, 
uh, dealing with some of the grounds, the expenses on the grounds, the wastewater treatment plant, talked about restoring some of the school expense budgets uh, and dealing with some of the fixed costs. So uh, we, we made that pretty clear to the, to the committee at the meeting. Uh, that's pretty much it, I think. Um, I have a question. Yeah. <clears throat> with the sale of the Berry product, um, property, yeah. how is that going to affect the town's budget? Won't affect the budget at all. It's not. It's, it's, uh, it's strictly for capital. infrastructure, capital projects. And they haven't really decided. I think they're probably going to, I would guess they're probably going to have some hearings or whatever on that, but they're talking right. about a, several different options, one of them including uh, putting storage in. It's Concord, Concord Street, Street yeah. linking it down, or linking it down towards mm -hmm. Route 28. So yeah. it will be increased the tax base eventually. But I think right, uh, eventually. I mean, we'll, I think we'll collect ninety thousand next year, and maybe in five years we'll be collecting three million if they build all the units. Mm -hmm. And supposed to start right away. Right, January. they already did. They broke. Yeah, down. There's, there's equipment over there. Yeah. There's equipment no over kidding. there. With, yeah. with, yeah. there is. With, with the comment on the skin in the game, I mean, I assume that would be the town, not the school committee. No, the town. And then well, no, no. If if we want Brad Jones to put in a project for funding, and it's a hundred thousand dollar project, we're going to have to put up fifty thousand, be it through capital, uh, the capital improvements project. But if it's not capital, the capital improvements committee, it's something that we'll have to look at. The school like committee. We want to make it. No, if it's a school project. It's yeah, if it's a school project, right. it might be specifically right. school funds. Yes, John. To, to that point, I think it's fair to say um, that working with Michael and, and Patrick, we're going to. I'm going to try to have two things in. Representative Jones's hands in January. Right. Ideas that we have about accelerating our one-to-one -one initiative potentially, where it looks like we have a matching, you know, we, we would have a matching contribution through the, the CIPC, and the other is on um, kind of the technology end of security system upgrades at, at our three elementary schools. Yeah. So um, I want to I want to have something to Brad sooner rather than later in the event that something becomes available that we right. we will you know hopefully be high on the list. And Scott, in most cases it would be. It would come out of the, it wouldn't come directly out of our operating budget, but in some cases Correct. it could yeah. be operating type stuff. But usually it would it wouldn't be like one of the things we talked about, and we're working on something else with this is, is the increased maintenance costs, et cetera, and how we might. But that's that's something else we're working on, and it is another area with the state. So, well, I mean, anything we could do to be again, I mean, I think it's great that our state representatives want to get involved and help on the local level, to the extent that there is an option available. Be important to try to explore that if there are needs that we can identify that they can help us with yeah i think what brad was saying there's no specific funding for it but he would carry the ball on something mm -hmm. if we had some investment in it and if right. it was something that was worthwhile he would try to get funding for it <clears throat> any other questions on that okay we also have the policy subcommittee and i think we've discussed um those policies and we have the contract subcommittee jerry and uh, scott met you want to yeah, I mean, is that what you I mean I, I think the the general idea of this committee was just to I mean look at what the contracts well the first thing we started with was looking at the contracts that we negotiate and yeah. as everyone knows we have different people negotiate different contracts so the first project we've done is really try to you know sit down and see what each team has done you know and just try to mm -hmm. you know again they're apple they're not apples to apples in that they're different positions but just to try to understand because I don't think we've done that in the past well no but I, I do think one one thing with that you know we it needs to make clear we each contract is negotiated Definitely. individually we don't we don't have a template but we're basically looking at these just to look at consistency and yep. just the different different aspects of each contract correct and, and again especially since we've you know had a very experienced committee for a number of years you know and I'm new on this and so like it's educational for me to just sit down and look at the different contracts you know because if I've if someday I'm in the room, it'd be nice to know what other people have done in the past and also see, yep. you know, like, again, like if this stands out versus all the other contracts, is there a reason for that? Or was this just something that wasn't brought up last time? So. And you're, you're new at this, and after what you're wearing tonight, this might be your last meeting. We may vote you out tonight. <laughs> Scott did some good work, and he actually did a layout of all the contracts yeah. and the specifics Saw of the that, contracts. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's clear that... Um, we are dealing with different groups. Right. Si the, the size of the group, the cost for the, the collective the, bargaining. What they perform at the school, their what responsibilities, they, their yeah, duties. What done in yeah. the past. So it is comparing it to, to a certain extent apples to oranges, but you can see that there's a, um, a, a different philosophy in right. how each contract's negotiated regarding benefits right. versus salary, et cetera. Yeah. 
it may be that we go through that a little bit more and try to make some recommendations to the full committee as to sure. how to proceed in the future. Because I think you guys brought this up before that some people have done just mm -hmm. teachers, some have done mm -hmm. just um, paraprofessionals, secretaries, whatever. So, anything else? That's it. And then just on that note, I'll mention we we have opened. I think I mentioned earlier negotiations with the NRTA. We had our first meeting um, last week. Yeah. NREA. TAEA. NREA. And uh, we have our next meeting scheduled for January 9th with them. Okay, next we have the Secondary School Building Committee, and there's really nothing to report on that. We've, there's not much going on there. We continue to press forward with remaining issues that need to be dealt right. with prior to close up, that's all. Future subcommittee meetings, athletic, athletic subcommittee meets tomorrow, NORCAM board, December 21st, policy subcommittee, January 4th, 7 a.m., SSBC, January 9th, finance planning team, January 23rd, and budget subcommittee will be sometime in January. Uh, correspondence, John, anything? No, sir. No administrative report? That's correct. Yes. <laughs> Future business. What makes it long every week. We have our next meeting is January 8th here. That's my, my contribution. January 22nd, we will be at the batch. And February 5th, we will be there for the batch presentation. And February 5th, we'll be back here for the middle school presentation. And with that, I will accept a motion. Oh, I, actually, just, I did want to mention one thing quickly. This is in the paper this week. Um, I don't think this, is, this group's officially involved, uh, uh, affiliated with the schools. But it's a group of um, seventh and eighth, gra eight seventh graders from the middle school and a fifth grader from the batch, and they are participating in the first Lego League robotics competition, which was held yes. Sunday, June, uh, Sunday, December 10th in Lemonster. And the group won a champions award, and they will be moving on to uh, the national qual qualifiers, where they'll compete against other teams from across the state. And I mention this because one of our goals this year is to bring to the public's attention good things going on with staff. Administrative, administrative and students. So I just wanted to mention that and say congratulations to that uh, group of students. It's called the Mimic Octopi team. And they will be moving on to the next level. And with that, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. Moved. Second. Motion by Julie, second by Janine. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Merry Christmas, uh, happy Hanukkah, happy seventh night of Hanukkah, and happy new year to all. Thank you.